For those of us who've joined us in Napa before, you know, the Beta SMB Institute Leaders Forum is special. It's a special location, a special venue, and best of all, special people. We pride ourselves on curating an A-list of attendees, the best and brightest leaders of our $500 billion plus business to small business marketplace. And every day we are adding speakers, workshops, and special events to this intimate forum, all of it highlighting the shared challenges and opportunities in a setting that drives casual and candid exchange. Join us at the 2022 B2 SMB Institute Leaders Forum, May 11th and 12th in Napa, California. Tickets are on sale now at b2smbi.com slash leadersforum22. Good day, everybody. Dave Walker here again, and um, happy to bring back two subject matter experts from our charter members Accenture um, to talk about new forms of, of segmentation, um, specifically small business uh, segmentation, obviously. Um, Jing Brewer and Stephanie Gorski last fall for a Best SMB conference had an absolutely terrific session. It was one of our highest viewed sessions on this on new things to consider as, as far as segmentation of small businesses are concerned. And there's actually a link to that session in the agenda for this event. So if you wanna go back and see part one of this series, then please go back and view it. But I'm thrilled to welcome them both back, both Jing and Stephanie to talk about part two of new segmentation of small businesses. So let me first uh, welcome Stephanie Gorski. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today. And please welcome back Jing Brewer. Hi, good to be here again. Good to have you both back. So, um, you know, I took I took a lot away and I know a lot away from that first um, session that we did around new forms of segmentation and um, thought it really raised some incredibly important points, not the least of which was just simply the fact that we all needed to revisit how we approached profiling, targeting, segmenting, and applying other forms of customer relationship management to small businesses. And the challenge is made even more acute, I think, by the last two years, um, where a lot of the indicators of, of what would be an intent to purchase or an intent to buy are kind of out the window. Those old metrics, those old um, proxies that we used are kind of out the window and a whole new set has really come into place. So uh, again, encourage you to go back and, and take a look at segment one, but you know, Stephanie, maybe a great starting point is just to recap some of the three or four biggest points from part one before we jump into part two. Can you do that for us? Yeah, absolutely. And Jing, please add in if there's something I miss, of course. Um, the biggest piece for me, when we think about segmentation, Jing and I have been rolling around in this for many times and also supporting many of our clients at Accenture through segmentation. One is don't make it overcomplicated. There's so few companies today that are actually segmenting their small and medium-sized business customer base. Um, it is less than with even just one attribute. And we're seeing that really be even just doing one type of segmentation really impact how they engage, how they support, and how they think about small, medium-sized businesses. They're just considering small, medium-sized businesses, one big tranche of companies that they're all treating in the same way, which we all know is not true. <laughs> small and medium-sized businesses are all very different and very unique. But at the same time, then it doesn't mean you have to come down to the persona level. I was actually talking to one of my clients earlier today and they were saying, well, I have to understand a persona at every different level of every different type of SMB. And I said, that sounds exhausting. And also, how are you going to use that? What are you, how are you actually going to embed that in your day-to-day -day of how you engage small, medium-sized businesses? And that was where we, where it was like, okay, I don't know. There's a nice, happy in-between that we found. So one, there's some basic indicators around segmentation for small, medium-sized businesses. At top of mind, we automatically think around industry, size of a small, medium-sized business, the age of an SMB. Those are some of the cores that we always look at. I will tell you the piece that really drives how I see SMBs, and Jing has seen it from another angle, how SMBs operate is really the size of a small, medium-sized business. 
your zero to 10 employee shop is going to look and feel very different on their buying and how they operate from that 100 to 250. For us at Accenture, we usually look at the broad landscape of small, medium-sized businesses from zero to 500 or one to 500 employees. And then we sub-segment within that. The other piece is we found industry didn't really make as much of a difference as we originally thought it could for SMB's decision-making and buying. But where it does make a difference, which I get so excited about, is how you think about advocacy and SMB is supporting each other in a community-based post-purchase model. The industry of an SMB matters a lot for what other SMBs look to support and engage with them. The other piece that I get really excited about, and then I'll let Jing see if I missed anything, but the other piece of segmentation that really we're seeing as the big, big piece of how SMBs operate is digital maturity. I've done over nine different studies this year on small and medium-sized businesses, and then engaging with clients many, many more studies on top of it. And I've continued to put a digital maturity type question into every different survey and interview we've driven with the small, medium-sized business audience. We continue to see the digital maturity and we break it out. You've heard me say this, Dave, in many different conversations, the stragglers, the emerging, the really savvy in digital maturity operate consistently different on how they buy, engage, want to see customer support, how much they're willing to pay. And the beauty is the consistency across the board between all those studies is pretty clear. So my favorite form of pushing some segmentation, especially around the small, medium-sized business market is really around that digital maturity because there's a lot to be said about the comparison and the, um, the views of SMBs across those different areas. Gene, yeah, and that? oh, I was going to add that um, everything that Stephanie said is spot on. And in addition to better understanding your SMB by you know thinking about their from a graphic digital maturity before you kind of get into that really super sophisticated persona detail persona, is you have to realize that um, how can we, how might we be able to systematically get information that allows us to better understand the firmographic, the digital maturity? Because yes, digital maturity, we kind of understand what it means, but what does it mean when we do this systematically? What kind of data can we leverage so that we can say business A is you know, in this category of maturity versus business B is in a different category. So that was another point that we talked about from a part one, the importance of using data to realize the strategy behind the segmentation. Because even though if you understand how you should be go after segmentation, segmenting your small, medium businesses, but if you don't have a systematic way of doing it, it becomes a daunting effort as well. So that was another thing that I just wanted to recap from a part one, the importance of incorporating the strategy element and then the technology element so that we can bring the two together and really help our clients enterprise to think better, understand and better engage with SMBs using this human plus machine solution. And I think that the, the summary of, of segment one that I remember was, it was kind of, uh, as you guys had done an excellent job of, of informing, instructing, and inspiring as TED Talk goes, um, TED Talks go. I think that the call to arms, the call to action that you guys had at the end, which really was, hey, this is something that actually can be transformative for your entire organization. How you view this small business customer is not just something that you apply in your um, direct marketing strategy. This is something that you apply really to all areas of product development, customer service, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm excited to see what today brings. And I thought the best place to really start is, you know, Steph, you referred to it. Um, you guys just do so much research and, and it's so in depth and it has so many great cross tabs in it. Can you just give us uh, some of the highlights of the most recent research you guys have done globally? Uh, on the state of small business? Yeah, so it was a really interesting from a global perspective. When we ran, so you all heard, have heard me talk a lot about the gap between enterprise and SMBs of how much SMBs really trust the enterprise and what do enterprise think of the SMBs. We ran that study again globally and I've shared some of that with you all in some different sessions, but the real big insight there when it comes to segmentation 
was when we started looking across the global markets, other than some small nuances, there really wasn't that much of a difference, which SMBs across, and we looked at 11 different countries, large countries that represent some pretty large territories too, but they were pretty similar. Wants and needs were similar. Willingness to pay was similar. They were, there was some really strong correlation between these countries now with some nuances. So for example, Brazil and Japan kept being outliers in different situations when it came to like customer support and one-to-one -one engagement and how they thought about those pieces. But overall, the similarity from a geography standpoint for small, medium-sized businesses was pretty huge, which again, goes back to segmentation and Dave, your model of how you're talking about this, that it's the end-to-end -end relationship you're developing with an SMB. So when I think about, as I engage with the customers we talk to, both Jing and I, I start talking about, okay, so now we've identified industry and global, you don't need to change too much of your product to be different, or you don't need to change too much of that pricing structure. But when then you look at really what the big differences are and the big gaps that we saw was again, digital maturity, no matter which company, country we looked at. We saw digital maturity, the number of savvy, um, small, medium-sized businesses that felt like they could pick up a product from an enterprise, take it and run with it, adopt it, get onboarded, felt like they could use it effectively, was still in that about 24% range of SMBs. Everyone else was below that. And we know from past, like all of our research, that those that are savvy are willing to pay more for a product are also more self-service based. So you don't actually have to give them a direct point of support. Whereas everyone below that needs more one-to-one -one engagement, more education, more support from the enterprise and aren't willing to pay as much. So it starts this really interesting conversation around, okay, so industries lightly matter, geography differences really don't matter too much, but this digital maturity across the board, if I really invest in supporting and engaging with those emerging and building them to savvy in a way that's more transformative, I can have a larger population that's actually willing to engage with me in a longer term. And we're seeing that consistently across the board, no matter if we're just talking US or global, which was pretty interesting. And then the other piece was just, as we all know, we come back to size of SMBs. Um, when we think about segmentation, there was a huge difference between the below 20 person SMB and also the above 100 um, employee SMB on how they operate, what they're buying, um, of like complexity of technology tools, all of those different pieces. So it's pretty impressive um, that it's reaffirming everything that we've shared before, Dave. And just to clarify, by differences between size of business, do you mean that as a, for instance, um, fewer small businesses that truly were small, 10 employees and less, um, were less digitally savvy. Is that really what you found or was it still proportionally the same no matter no matter which segment of size you went through? It's actually interesting. It's proportionally the same. So it really depends actually on a multi-factor system then too because then you end up saying, okay, so some larger SMBs that are a little older and have been around for 25 years or 30 years, they're actually less digitally mature. Um, because they haven't upgraded or engaged with the technology and how things are progressing and needed more help and support with tools that are coming out today. So it wasn't a direct correlation with size and digital maturity, actually. Jing, what were some of the data points of, of indicators of digital maturity? Um, you kind of described those data points real briefly before, but what are they? I mean, are, is it they have a website? Uh, they're active users of social media or things like that, or, or are they other things that indicate digital maturity? It's everything that you just mentioned and more. Okay. And it really depends on what the enterprise solution is. So I think last time I may have given an example of maybe advertising. Um, so let's say if you are looking to, you as a small, medium businesses, that's looking to purchase an advertising solution. So when we're talking about digital maturity, what we're looking for is 
how much of a social media, for example, of a presence does this business have? The more presence that it has, the more likely this business is aware of how to use the existing marketing mechanism, which is using influencers, using social media to have more of that one-to-one -one connection with their end customers. So that's one example. Another example is are they so the are these businesses that are advertising do they have an e-commerce platform that they're using are they building their e-commerce platform or do they have um are they using a platform solutions right so that gives us indication of how sophisticated they are in terms of how they're operating transacting their business how they're selling their product so those are some of the examples another example is that we can actually look at the the type of jobs a business is hiring, right? So if they're hiring IT resources or resources that are helping them to manage their cloud infrastructure environment, that means they are really focusing on bring and using technology to facilitate their business. So these are just some of the uh, examples that actual examples that we use in terms of identifying the digital maturity of a company. And that is actually one of the things that um, a lot of times our clients are struggling with because when they're thinking about how to better understand, let's say their existing customers, small, medium business customers, they're only using their first party data. Basically the data that was um, all about how this business was transacting on our client's platform or using client's product or using client services. But they're not really looking into these additional signals that I just mentioned. And they're going to miss the opportunity to understand the digital maturity of a existing customer of theirs. They may be able to see that, hey, this one company or small medium business that's raising a lot of support cases, perhaps they are able to kind of leverage those type of indicator to say, hey, they may need more support. But that is still looking at one business at a time versus if we can leverage these third-party signals, external signals that allows us to form a better understanding of the overall population, then instead of being pro, uh, instead of being reactively supporting, the enterprise now have an opportunity to proactively support. And they can start to create a segment around maybe um, you know, these 10,000 businesses that are in the high category in terms of maturity, give them more information, self-service page, give them blogs, give them, you know, um, you know, forum, forums as SDKs that they can leverage versus another group maybe is in the lower half of the digital maturity. So those are the ones that you might want to do outreach that are more um, personal based. And it, it sounds really intuitive because you're not looking at how much money they're spending, but because the maturity aspect, some of the maybe high spenders, you may need very little um, handholding versus some of the lower spenders, you're not fully unlocking their potential because you haven't reached out the right way. And that is the power of using data to be able to unlock the the element, the untapped potential that allows our clients to fully, you know, not only to be able to generate revenue, because that's the, that's always the nice outcome, but what's even more great about this is building the relationship, having that trust. Because at the end of the day, when you do the right, when you engage the right way, when you do the right thing, you are going to build that trust relationship and the understanding. And uh, in return, the customer, small, medium business customers that are using our clients, products, services, platforms, they are, you know, spending more money. So it's a win-win situation. And that is what we, you know, when we're talking about how we help our clients with the segmentation, that's the end goal that we have in mind is how do we have this understanding in a way that's supported by these facts, right? These breadcrumbs of information that we can gather so that we can generate more of the proactive engagement and build better relationships that will result in growth in both the small, medium business themselves and our clients. I so love that. And, and just to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but but no. to, just to to um, to reinforce, these, these data signals aren't, they're not hard to find. They're not hard to gather. It's not like you're, encroaching on privacy or 
you know, pulling the, 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 the sheets back on the, on the financials of a company. It really is the stuff that's kind of out in the open. We just need to track it. Is that fair? Is publicly available data and oftentimes is to think about what kind of information that's going to help us to decide and make strategic decisions on the different type of segments. And that is the reason why, you know, a service company like Accenture excels at this. Um, a lot of times you will hear people talk about, you know, algorithm centric AI. Um, which, you know, people just kind of constantly fine tuning their algorithm, their code based versus the Accenture approach is that we're data uh, driven AI, where if we can bring the right data, if we can bring the right signal, the breadcrumbs, then we that allows us to have a much more um, a, a enhanced way of predicting the likelihood of the maturity, the likelihood of uh, conversion, and many other predictions that we can potentially leverage. And 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 I keep kind of bring this uh, that this marriage between strategy and technology and AI, because in order to really leverage AI in the right way, we cannot just let a bunch of AI data scientists do their thing. They have to come with a strategy. The, oh, come the on. They're thinking. nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm an AI, so, you know, I, I can talk about that. <laughs> so Stephanie, um, in the application of, of these insights, and, and then, I, and I, I mean, I, in the first session, I was kind of gobsmacked by the fact that, boy, it's rare in the small business, the B to SMB space, you find a single cross tab, you know, something that works across all sorts of different kinds of um, uh, decision points in, inside your organization. It, it's, is it, it's not your suggestion that the best way to use this as an organization is just to trim out all the digitally immature and pay, and pay no attention yeah. to them. Talk to me a little bit about how does an organization apply this basically in, in areas beyond just simple targeting and marketing? It's a great point. And Jing was starting to hit on some of this that actually it's perfect because it was about ready to amplify some of her points with it too and where you're going, Dave. So I love the path you're going on. Perfect example of this is personalized recommendations. I'm going to use another point from our study. Over 30% of the SMBs that we engaged with in that global study said with more personalized recommendations, from an enterprise company they're gonna work with, the more they feel like the company understands them and the more they're gonna to continue to do business with them. So what that looks like in segmentation is if I understand where they're at in their digital maturity, so if they're a straggler, we understand what their needs are and their needs look fundamentally different than those that are savvy. They need more support, they need more education, they need more of an understanding of the value proposition they need more of a discussion around price of actually the ROI on the price and what they're spending because that willingness to pay is a bigger factor. So you're messaging the recommendations you give them around the product, how they go to adoption, how they onboard, what you may even give them in onboarding could all look different to make sure you're bringing them along in that process. And once you get them over that hurdle of either they understand the technology you're positioning or they understand how to use, and I like what Jing was mentioning, one of the things we test heavily with digital maturity, when she was mentioning all these data sets that are coming together, it's not just, which many people do, is they say, have you bought the technology or have you purchased it for your company? It's actually truly adoption. And have you seen them adopt it and use it in their business? So with all of those indicators and how they're performing, and if you bring them along, you can start improving actually on their digital maturity and move those stragglers into more of that emerging bucket where they're learning and they're teaching themselves in a little bit better of a toolkit. What I recommend for a good option, a good example is one of the things that I'm recommending today for digital straggl both stragglers and then emerging before they get to savvy is having a, a contact number for support. Mm -hmm. Like almost like a 911 number that can easily be dialed so that they can have someone on call who can engage with them effectively. Because we know those, those that segment of small, medium-sized businesses value, might not use it, but they value that that number is there. Mm -hmm. And whereas that more savvy will do it more in a self-service model. They'll try everything first because they feel like they can usually navigate it on their own. And if they need help, they're actually probably gonna use a chat feature more than they're gonna use a phone number. So having chat enabled for them. So it really depends on how you support from everything from onboarding of that engagement process 
all the way through customer service could change based on how you actually engage with the different levels of digital maturity of small and medium sized businesses. And the, the, let's talk about the reward of doing that. So yeah. the, the migration of moving, you know, more of your customer base into greater levels of digital maturity. Um, you've done some studies and some research on first and foremost price sensitivity as it Correct. relates to increasing my own sense of, of, of savvy uh, as yeah. it relates to any, any part of my business. Um, is there, do you think there's an appetite for small businesses to pay for that assistance to become more digitally savvy? 100%. So there's two really data points to hit here first. If you drive businesses, and I, by the way, I have a multitude of different data points, actually at the granular level, product level here too as well. So happy and thrilled to talk to anyone offline on this. But somewhere between 5 to 15% of increase in spend, you can expect to see with a savvy SMB versus an emerging or a straggler. Now with that also, we also measured how much they're willing to pay for customer support. How many of them? Over 50% of SMBs that we engage with. And then it tilted heavily, even more so to the straggler and emerging level are willing to pay for higher level of customer support and education to, to get them over that. So there's a willingness to pay of even 15% more on the product or service that you're giving them. And then additional willingness to pay on that actual customer support in the end, if you're actually helping them move along in their digital maturity. So that, that in and of itself is kind of like, <laughs> that'll raise some eyebrows around the executive committee table, right? I mean, it's like, there's such a fear of, of raising prices to small businesses because they are so quote price sensitive, but really not when it comes to getting more of what they need. It seems, it seems what, what, what it's saying. So Jing, I, um, the, the, um, talk a little bit about marketplaces and the, the, the role that marketplaces really play in the context of, of uh, digital maturity and the use of marketplaces for, and by that I mean that everybody is racing in the B2B space and in the B2SMB space to create marketplaces on behalf of their clients. Sometimes it's purely for their own products. Sometimes it's their products and affiliated products. Sometimes it's like an Alibaba. It's a wide open, wild, wild west kind of marketplace. So the, is, the, is the adoption of small businesses towards marketplace, is that really, is that something that really is also indicated by digital maturity or is it something that really um, is, is more across the spectrum of, of small business? So um, the adoption of marketplace is driven by a couple different factors. And one of the biggest factors is COVID. <laughs> and because we can do business in person, or at least uh, the doing business in person has slowed down traumatically during the COVID times, um, a lot of the small, medium businesses flock to different marketplace platforms to basically leverage their service so that they can operate, they can survive, right? And that was beginning of the 2020s. And one of the things that we have seen is because the need to become a digital business, um, this is where we have seen a diverse set of SMBs. And that's the research that, you know, Stephanie was talking about, the mature, the strugglers, you know, the basically the, the whole spectrum of different digital maturity is because in a normal circumstance, you have time to become a digital business at your own term. But under this really unprecedented time, businesses were forced to become a digital business overnight. And, mm -hmm. and this is where a lot of the challenges with the diversity comes into play. And this is also one of the kind of blessing in disguise for a lot of our clients because they saw this like surge of, you know, customers that are using their product, especially for um, our clients in the marketplace space. But if you are not treating and understanding which of your customer base requires more of the, the uh, 911 support that Stephanie was mentioning versus others just perfectly happy doing self-service, you're going to have a retention issue. So this is where you know, not only acquisition is not, it's, it's a great starting point, obviously, acquiring new customers, 
But retaining customers is now becoming a super hot topic among a lot of our clients, especially in the software and platform space that are offering these technologies for our for small medium businesses to become digitally enabled. And um, and Stephanie can talk more about this, but based on our latest survey, we kind of did a survey two points, and we saw that even though there are more businesses that are using technology and um, uh, you know, platforms to enable them to become a digital business. But the number, like the, the percentage of businesses that are considered to be savvy versus, you know, struggler didn't really change. That, that gives us a strong indication that, you know, even though a lot of business, all kinds of uh, spectrum is flooding to, it's flooding uh, to, you know, getting support from our clients in the software and platform space, but they're not, they're not really, their digital maturity hasn't really changed. So echoing what Stephanie was saying that the training, the, you know, really becoming that digital savvy business, it's not only about using a platform, but they actually have to know what they're using it for. So this kind of, you know, further support our point around the segmentation. If our clients can understand and easily start creating a segment around which of a population pool that they should maybe not to get a little bit more training into their inbox and, you know, do it in a way that that's really attractive. And also, you know, some of the businesses that are looking for these type of training and it's so hard to find. Um, so how do you make that discovery easier, right? So all those type of treatments are becoming um, much more um, accessible. And, and some fun facts or fun stats is that, when we help our clients with, you know, better engagement with SMBs using um, segmentations, we have seen a 50 to 70% increase in customer retention. That's huge. So mm -hmm. it doesn't take that much to retain when you do the right things. And in order for you to do the right thing, you have to understand what you need to do for which population of your businesses. Stephanie, I mean, I know this is like a space that's like dear and near to your heart. Anything, anything you want to add? <laughs> I was going to say, Jake, like you hit on so many of the points. I'm like glowing over here and smiling and nodding my head profusely as you were talking. Um, you know, one of the, I was interviewing an SMB this week. Um, and one of the points that they said to me was, I really wish that enterprises made this more of a world built for SMBs because today it's not. And if like we keep going to that mantra and Dave, you've been asking both me and Jing a range of questions around like, what does this look like? How does it come to life? Why does segmentation matter? The other piece that we haven't hit on is we keep going back to like, we're putting a lot, even with training, a lot on the SMB, right? Like they have to figure this out on their own, no matter what you give them, they're trying to make it work for their business. We all know they're time poor. And like, there's so much on their plate, especially with all the different aspects that they're still dealing with. Why don't we, I mean, like as enterprise, the other piece that we didn't hit on, yes, training's awesome that both Jing and I hit on, but it's also product refinements. Like, how do we simplify? How do we hit that simple button? Like that old school, like how do we simplify everything that we possibly position as SMB and then maybe position the product and simplify it even more depending what SMB we reach out to and make this world truly more made for SMBs than made for consumers or big businesses. Um, and that's what I kept grounding in when, we were, when I was talking to SMB this week, which was a lot of, which was obviously a lot of fun and very inspiring for me right now and deeply tied to what Jing was talking about. Well, listen, it is, it is very inspiring. I mean, it, it's, it's very much, uh, a, again, a call to arms, a call to action on behalf of all of us in B to SMB to, if we really want to leverage this huge digital transformation that has happened with small businesses that is widely written about and accepted as a, a kind of a revolutionary moment over the last two years, then we really do have to walk the talk of helping small businesses successfully transform digitally, not just say that they've digitally transformed, but to actually help them make that change. I was, uh, there was a, an article I read a couple of weeks ago um, that was absolutely terrific, that, that really said product development is particularly for small businesses needed to become less monolithic and more modular because that's the way that small businesses, that's how they think. They don't think about monolithic solutions 
because for them and many of their and virtually any business application, monolith doesn't work. Um, what works is modular piece at a time, you know, rub it together, MacGyver it, however they describe it, but it's it is very, very modular in, in approach. So um, the there's this emerging, I want to talk a little bit about something that we've all heard about, but very few of us understand what its implications are. And I want to know if you guys are doing research on it, if you've seen any research or results, but it's about these four and a half million new small businesses that have come up over the last year. Um, now, let's start with, do we believe that four and a half million businesses have actually started in the US economy? And it's come from very reliable sources, mainly government sources who are really tracking in corporations and applications for business licenses, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't disbelieve the four and a half million number, but in asking a number of different enterprise organizations, people who are in the kind of the, the, the news space, the editorial space, the influence and advocacy space, have you seen these people? Have you seen these four and a half million people? Are they showing up on your doorstep? And the answer is generally not sure, not sure if we've seen them yet. But is there, do you plan any research to really understand them? Because there is at least conjecture that these four and a half million people who may be primarily sourced from the great migration, they're coming from corporate jobs and are, are making lifestyle decisions, if nothing else, to start their own business versus working in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Do they come to the party with greater digital savvy? Do they come to the party in the same kind of proportions that the rest of small businesses do? Uh, are, are you going to research that? And, and Or do you have any insights on that group yet? So you are literally stealing my next thunder of different pieces that Dave, I'm excited to talk to this group about. And I know Jing is too. We just completed a piece of research around this actually, because Jing and I spent a lot of time engaging with actually some new SMBs. And I, quite frankly, there's a lot of new SMBs that started within Accenture during COVID. Of mm -hmm. People either deciding that they were done with consulting, time to leave, time to go after a passion where they were running their own business or doing it on the side. So both of us were like, want to understand these a little bit more. So, and this, and this wasn't a setup, by the way. I actually was, no, I did not know generally if you were doing that research. Okay, great. Um, and we're just coming out with it now. So I am still working through actually the data sets and some of the cross tabs with these actually inputs um, real time. So a few data points from that, that is actually, and it doubles down on why this segmentation is so important discussion is they do look different. I actually don't question that 4 million number too much, to be very honest. We were seeing, we did a, I mean, I'll, I'll give you all the survey details later, but there was somewhere around 20% of people responded to the survey when we sent it out and it closed rather quickly. So there, there wasn't a huge dropout rate um, that they had started their own small business during, co during COVID. And it actually wasn't driven mostly by COVID. The reason they started their small business because they had a passion in this area. They wanted to do something different. They reflected, they had a reflection during their time. And they were actually driven by their passion and were more in tune. This gets into a little bit more mental health and understanding what your purpose is in life and all those different things that happen during this time has driven small businesses up. Now, a lot of people haven't left their other day job during that time of actually opening the small business. Some of them aren't incorporated yet but they're seeing it as a potential of where they want to go. And with the interesting fact is Dave off of that, it's the number of people that started also want to start another small business. So they're seeing this as not only they're going to drive one opportunity, but they may drive multiple opportunities forward. And that this is getting to be a little bit of a deep interest area. So I'm excited to share those numbers with you. But what's really interesting is that digital maturity level of these new small businesses that have started is much higher in the savvy than what it has been more traditionally which again, only makes it that more important to even ground on the firmographics of when a business was started, how long has it been in place? What's the size of it? Because a lot of these new small businesses that have started, I mean, we're talking about marketplace and everything else, have started using more of those digital tools and are a lot smaller of companies based on the size of employees. And then also just generally more digitally mature. So if you treat them the same that you've treated small businesses forever, 
you're, I mean, James point on retention gets me so excited because you're not going to retain them. They're going to 100% look for something different. And if you're not experimenting on how you engage with them, like one of the things Jing and I have spent some time on too is low code, no code of how do we actually support SMBs where they can create and enhance products in their own way and open up low code, no code for them. And really this new group, probably the group you want to spend some time doing that with. So it's, it's been a lot of fun actually seeing that group and I'm excited to share more later, but seeing that group come to life and it truly does look different. Well, it's definitely something, a topic I, I want you to bring to the, to the leaders forum in May, but Jing, is it fair to say that digitally savvy um, small businesses have higher expectations of the quality of customer service that they get? Well, I would say digitally savvy uh, businesses have a different expectation okay. uh, in terms of quality of service. They wanted to be able to know where they can go to get service and they wanted to know how they can get service on their own. And there's a lot of self-support element that uh, digitally mature savvy um, businesses want. Like, for example, you know, they wanted to have like a, almost like a uh, a to-do list or a guide or something that they can just like start tinkering with themselves. And that there's a lot of times um, that's where the digitally savvy will come into play because they know how the technology works or they know how to leverage the technology versus, you know, the, the less savvy, they may need someone to walk them through or talk them through it. Right. So I would say it's not necessarily one needs more support than the other. It's just different forms of support. And that is what we're trying to say that, you know, once you have a better understanding of the segmentation, then you can design the different forms of support so that, you know, something that that's like, that's, you know, well detailed uh, to do article um, can be very helpful for one person versus another or one, sorry, one business versus another. So that's basically the power of segmentation so that, you know, what will work for one group and what will work better for another group. So Stephanie, talk to us a little bit about, this has been fantastic as we wrap this up, talk to us a little bit about um, how you're more formalizing and kind of institutionalizing inside of Accenture expertise in the small business space. Talk to us about Grow SMB. Yeah, and Jing and me, this is like a joint partner in crime kind of approach to things. So Jing, if I leave anything else, I'll please jump in. Um, this has been a passion project for the last year and a half. And I have to tell you, as a B to SMB Institute has been a cornerstone of it. So like, it's definitely with you being behind the scenes and not necessarily knowing everything in the details, Dave, you've definitely been a part of the journey. And the big thing that we've been sharing is it's grounded obviously in all the research. Everything that I um, has been really important to Jing and I as we've set up this really platform within um, within Accenture has been about we have to be SMB centric. So Accenture, which is a company that's always supportive of our enterprise clients, we want to make sure we're grounded in the voice of the SMB as we set up for success to guide those enterprises in the right way. And so one, it's grounded in the research. It's grounded in the voice of what small, medium-sized businesses need. A lot of detail around, went into around that. And then what we end up doing is we're basically taking everything that we see around the life cycle of the journey of a small, medium-sized business engaging with enterprise and have set it up what tools, what, what interaction models, what segmentation, what key points. I mean, I love that Jing just said for an SMB, even like what are the to-do list of items that you need in order to be successful. Same thing we're doing for enterprise around onboarding, for example. What do you need to onboard an SMB based on the segmentation model that we're recommending to make sure they're successful across many different industries? So we've set it up with a real toolkit um, and approach that we can start talking to many different companies about to make sure they're thinking about SMBs at the core and setting up for success to not only engage them in the right way and you know, start a relationship with them, but continue a relationship and retain them. Yeah. And okay. I wanted to, I wanted to give um, a Stephanie a shout out because she was, or she is still 
a true kind of thought leader behind how to help our clients engage them with SMBs. So our Grow SMB offer has been uh, up and running for the last two years or so, but Stephanie has been in the game talking about SMBs, how to help our clients to work better with SMBs for five plus years. Um, and she really brought those research into this conversation. And um, this Grow SMB, it took a village it took so many different organizations within Accenture to bring it together. And what we bring is various type of offerings, capabilities, assets that allows us to be able to support our clients where they are. So some clients, they may be just starting or they kind of engage with SMBs or opportunistically engaging with their SMB customers, but they may not have, you know, full-blown process or haven't really optimized what they're doing. We have offering package for that. And then some clients are, they've been doing a really good job, but they wanted to kind of up elevate it, right? So they, they did a great job of acquiring SMBs, but now they're thinking about retention. So we have another package around that. And then what's even more exciting is that a lot of our clients, especially in the software and platform space, they're really kind of thinking above and beyond just, you know, how do I acquire them? They're still thinking about that. How do I retain them? But they start thinking about how do I help small, medium businesses to strengthen their business so that effectively, how do I provide the right mechanism for my you know, small, medium business customer, right? That's using my platform. If I'm the CEO of the software and platform company, how do I provide them the right facility, right training, right financial mechanism, like um, grants or uh, uh, loans, whatever, so that the small, medium businesses can be successful during this turbulent time. So all those is where we see a lot of our clients or some of our clients are moving towards, which is how do I support small, medium businesses so that they can strengthen their business. And that allows um, them to further have a, a, a stronger relationship with our clients. And then in return, there's loyalty, there's you know uh, more usage on the platform. And, um, and last but not least, the, that growth of the small, medium businesses is also good for the society as well, because that fuels the local economy, that fuels the local jobs, and then that helps all of us grow. So that is something that we're super excited about. The, um, the Grow SMB offering is that we have created a package that is you know, suitable for wherever our clients are, including segmentation is one of the foundational capabilities that's across all stages. So Steph, in, in the simplest sense, what's the starting point for enterprises that wanna reach out to you and begin a conversation? reach out to us <laughs> <laughs> yes it's that simple no it's i didn't mean I, I didn't make I, mean, <laughs> I really didn't mean to make it that stupid a question um is there do you find that um an intake assessment or a whiteboard exercise or a simple you know casual fireside chat around you know with the leaders of the organization of what they're trying to what they're seeing and what they're trying to accomplish where, where do you think is the right starting point yeah, there's so many different. It depends on the company and where they're at. Um, I love, I mean, honestly, it's really just like SMBs are all different. All these companies we're engaging with are all different. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I have a whiteboarding session and a workshop for, you know, for four times next week, um, one each day. And then I'm also doing a little bit of like just rolling around and some ideas, kind of like what we're talking about right now, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, so it really just depends. Um, mm -hmm. we're happy to chat anytime, quite frankly, mm -hmm. having a conversation around it is important. I think the baseline of it is it's just knowing your vision around how to support small, medium sized businesses mm -hmm. and it not being grounded in what you need as a company and what, so, so many come to me and say, I'm just looking to grow my SMB portfolio. And then I ask, what are you looking to do for SMBs? And so it's having that two-sided view of, okay, what's my value prop to SMBs, which so many times enterprises are missing. And then we go to the next layer because we're talking about segmentation. What are you doing for the different types of segments of SMBs? And how does that look different? I think, that's, that, I, I think that's your starting point. I mean, to be honest with you, I think that yeah. the starting point of, ask, of asking very pointedly to a leadership team, what are you doing for SMBs? Um, because it, it I, I think 
to give credit where credit is due, I think you're actually helping enterprises create a new vision of how they're going to market, not just simply tactically, practically, process-wise, you know, application-wise. It's really kind of a very different kind of, uh, the center of gravity is different. Let's put it that way. The center of gravity being actually on the needs of the small business as as obvious as that sounds in the B to SMB space, I would say guilty as charged. Very few B to SMB brands are actually SMB centric. Um, they are they are enterprise centric, or they are bluntly bastardized versions of whatever their B two B center of gravity was. So I yeah. do think what you're doing is really is is really is important. I think it helps revision. And I think asking that that question so plainly and so simply, what are you doing for SMBs? Well, let me just show you what they want. Um, yep. Let's start there is, is really just a great gateway into all the great research that you guys have done. And this has been terrific um, and a great bookend to session one. I'm sure there's session three, four, five, as we really move this along. But there are so many dimensions to an SMB centric approach. And there are so many different factors that are, I think are changing, not the least of which is the right. entry of these four and a half million small, small businesses. And, you know, at the leaders forum, we'll be talking about other kind of big revolutions or expected to be big real revolutions like cryptocurrency and the metaverse and low right. code, no code, and all the other things that really have the potential at least to be transformative in the marketplace um, and really change a, a lot for small business. So thank you guys again for doing this. Yeah. It's absolutely terrific. And uh, look forward to, I hope, seeing you in Napa and um, and really you know continuing to do the good work in partnership with you guys to support Grow Small Biz. We're excited. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jing. Take care, guys.